Saturday, October 10, 1942, German state radio announces that the kidnapping of Charles A. Lindbergh, 33rd President of the United States, is signatory to America's historic Iceland understanding with the Third Reich, has been discovered to have been perpetra perpetrated by a conspiracy of Jewish interests. Top secret Weimar... Top secret Wehrmacht intelligence... Top secret Wehrmacht intelligence data are cited to corroborate initial reports from the Ministry of State that the pilot was masterminded by a warmonger Roosevelt in collusion with his Jewish Treasury Secretary Morgenthau, his Jewish Supreme Court Justice Frankfurter, and his Jewish investment banker Barack. And that is being financed, and that it is being financed by the international Jewish users Warburg and Rothschild and carried out under the command of Roosevelt's mongrel henchman, the half-Jew gangster LaGuardia, mayor of, of Jewish New York City, along with the powerful Jewish governor of New York State, the financier Lehman, in order to return Roosevelt to the White House and launch an all-out Jewish war against the non-Jewish world. The intelligence data, which have been turned over to the FBI by the German embassy in Washington, alleged the assassination of Walter Winchell was planned and executed by the same cobble of Roosevelt Jews and responsibility for the crime predictably attributed to them uh, predictably attributed by them to Americans of German descent so as to foster the vicious Where is Lindbergh campaign which in turn moved the president to take to the air and fly to the scene of the assassination to reassure the citizens of Louisville, Kentucky who were justifiably fearful of organized Jewish retaliation. But there, according to the Wehrmacht reports, as the president addressed the crowd, an airport mechanic bridled, or bribed by the Jewish conspiracy who was himself vanished and believed to have been murdered by order of LaGuardia rendered the aircraft's radio inoperative. No sooner had the president taken off for Washington than he was unable to make contact with the ground or with other aircraft. And had no choice but to capitulate when the spirit of St. Louis, corralled by high-flying British fighter pilots, which forced him to deviate from his course and to land some hours later at an airstrip secretly maintained by international Jewish interests across the Canadian border from Lehman State of New York. In America, the German announcement prompts Mayor LaGuardia to tell City Hall reporters, any American who can believe that Lollapalooza of a Nazi lie has sunk to the lowest possible level. Nevertheless, both the mayor and the governor are said by informed sources to have been interviewed at length by agents of the FBI, the Secretary of the Inter and Secretary of the Interior Ford is demanding that Mackenzie King, Prime Minister of Canada, conduct an intensive search on Canadian soil for President Lindbergh and his captors. Acting President Wheeler is reported to be examining the German documentation with White House aides, but will make no comment about the allegations until the search for the president's plane has been completed. Navy destroyers along the Coast Guard, along with Coast Guard PT boats, are now looking for signs of an air crash as far north as Cape May, New Jersey, and as far south as Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, while ground units of the Army Marine Corps and National Guard continue to search in 20 states for clues to the missing plane's whereabouts. The National Guard units enforcing the nationwide curfew report no incidents of violence prompted by the president's disappearance. Under martial law, America remains calm, though the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan and the leader of the American Nazi Party have jointly called upon the acting president to implement extreme measures to protect America from a Jewish coup d'etat. Meanwhile, a committee of American Jewish clergymen, led by Rabbi Stephen Wise of New York, telegrams the First Lady, expressing their deepest sympathy in her family's hour of need. Rabbi Lionel Bengelsdorf is seen entering the White House in the early evening, reportedly there at Mrs. Lindbergh's request to offer spiritual guidance to the family during what is now the third day of their vigil. The White House investigation, or the White House invitation to Rabbi Bengelsdorf is widely interpreted to indicate the First Lady's refusal to accept that Jewish interests have anything to do with her husband's disappearance. And we'll pause there. <laughs>